Dear brethren, we are very thankful to the Lord for this new opportunity that we have to be together here to worship Him and to learn from His Word. As uh, usually I, I ask of prayers, please pray for the Holy Spirit to be with us so that we can be guided by Him and we can understand His Word. Brethren, I'd like to call your attention for Genesis 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And we find a, a very equivalent Bible verse in Leviticus 17, 11. I would like to, to stress this principle of the gospel. The first principle that I mentioned, God will provide the lamb. And uh, Leviticus 17, 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your soul. Uh, brother, the principle is this. In the pagan religion, they believe that to appease God, they should make sacrifice. Even they used to make human sacrifice. Then their mentality was like this. God is angry. Then to appease him, we need to sacrifice ourselves to appease him. But here we find something else. Uh, prophetically speaking, Abraham said, God will provide the lamb. We, we don't provide anything for our salvation. Is it clear, brethren? We don't provide anything for our salvation. And uh, Leviticus 17, 11, God said, the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you. It's not the man who gave something to the Lord to appease him. It's God who offered himself for us, for our salvation. Brad, this is an essential principle of the gospel. It should be made very clear in our mind. God sacrificed himself for us. And how about when you talk about uh, to make sacrifice? Uh, what sacrifice do we, do we do, brethren? Sister White says, I am ashamed when we talk about the human sacrifice. When we compare Christ's sacrifice on the cross, what do we do as sacrifice? To renounce our selfishness, to renounce our sins, to renounce our corruption, our burden. Is this sacrifice? We should be ashamed of that. Real sacrifice, the spirit prophet says, real sacrifice is only the sacrifice of Christ, who gave himself for us on Calvary. Now, brethren, in Genesis 22, we find a very touching story. When we were singing the song service, we sang the old story. Then, brethren, I would repeat to you an old story. We find uh, Abraham, he was a, a very submissive person to the Lord. When he was first, he was called when in you of the Chaldeans, Mesopotamia, today Iraq. Abraham had revealed a humble submission to God's plan for him. Uh, but let's compare this way. And uh, I talked to Brother Orlando, brother, uh, we need you to leave Roanoke. Could you leave next month? Well, what would be the question, Brother Orlando? Where I, should I go? Ah, brother, this will come later. We will decide later. You need to leave. You can take south direction, towards south, but the place we will decide later. 
How do you think about that? <laughs> it is a good proposal. But God said to Abraham, look, leave your country, leave your parents, leave your home, and go to a, another place. But I will show you later. What was the reaction of Abraham? He left. Yeah, he left. God will provide. God will show me the place. But I will, I will obey. Then in verse 4, chapter 12, Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. No, brother, do you know how old was he? 75 years old. When we say to a young man, a young lady, look, uh, we need to leave, we need to travel, then they get excited. Not so. Oh, we go to such a place, we have fun, we knew different places. But how about uh, uh, we invite Brother Burek? Uh, Brother Burek, let us have a travel just to have some fun, to know some place. Is it easy? No, it's not, brethren. Then Abraham was 75 years old. And God said to him, look, leave your place and go somewhere else. And I will show thee later. And he just obeyed. He left. Now, brethren, we find that Abraham was a human being. He was not a superman. And he had some problem in his character. He was not a perfect man. Could you say that he was like us? Yes, he was a human being. He was a believer, but he was not a perfect man. And when they, were, they arrived in Egypt, then uh, Abraham showed some weak point in his, his character. Then he said to his wife, look, you are a fair woman. And when you arrive there, people will look to you. And what would they do? They will kill me because of you. Because you are my wife. Then let us make a plan to be free for, from this problem. You say, look, I'm not his wife. I'm his sister. Then you be well, and I will be well because of you. Was this a good plan? No, not at all. <laughs> it was a very, very risky, risky plan. In what sense, what sense it was a good plan? His idea? His own concern was to escape for his life. <laughs> but was a, a divine plan? No, that was a selfish, selfish plan. What was the result? And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plague because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that you have done to me? Why didn't thou tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidst thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to be my wife. Now therefore, behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. Was it a good Testimony? No. We know, Brad, that uh, this problem was repeated later. He, wa he went to another place, he repeated the same mistake. This was a uh, weak, point, weak point in his character. Now, as we mentioned before, he was 75 years old when he was called. And God promised that he would be the father of a big nation. But now they reveal another problem. He said, he and his wife, I am almost 100 years old, and you are not, you are not a young woman or a young lady. How can we have a son? It's true that God promised that. 
but uh, we need to do our part. <laughs> we need to do our part. Did you hear many times this, this expression? God does his part and we need to do our part. Then let us do our part. We need to help the Lord. Because I don't believe that we can, that God can fulfill his promise with us. Because we are old people. Let us take some human steps to help the Lord fulfill his promise. Then they devise a, a plan. A bread, that plan was in harmony with the custom of the time. For instance, when a, a lady, she was, she was barren, could not bear child, then they used to have her maid servant. That was legal, according to the world. And then the maid servant would bear a son or a daughter, and legally, that son or daughter would belong to, to the, the wife. Then legally, it was accepted. But, brother, you know, there are many legal things in the world that are totally against God's will. Even though it was a, a, plan, a plan approved by the world, but it was not in a harmony with God. Then, brother, there are many things that we can do as Paul said, but we should not do. <laughs> because even though it's legal, it's not according to God's will. And uh, Sarah's Abraham wife bare him no children. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abraham, Behold, now the Lord has restrained me for bearing Interesting that she put blame the Lord. <laughs> God has restrained me. But God, God had promised something else. Then she revealed lack of faith. I pray thee, go into my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And now Abraham commits a serious mistake. <laughs> he hearkened. The voice of Sarah. And Sarah, Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. Then, brother, now um, a serious problem. Second wife. And he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had, she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Now, brother, now we see some terrible consequence of that sin. And now Sarah, she blamed Abraham. Said, my wrong be upon thee. I have given my maiden into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. Who is the guilty one? <laughs> Both are the guilty ones. Abram had accepted without question the promise of a son. But he did not wait for God to fulfill his word in his own way and time. Brethren, we read about this problem in different circumstances. You remember Zechariah, the, the father of John the Baptist? Same problem. And when God came to fulfill the promise, he said, I cannot believe. <laughs> then you'll be speechless. Because you didn't believe. A delay was permitted to test his faith in the power of God. But he failed to endure the trial. One question, brother, was his faith perfect? No. Was his wife faith perfect? No. Thinking it impossible that a child should be given her in her old age, Sarah suggested as a plan by which the divine purpose might be fulfilled. Look, brethren, she suggests a plan to fulfill God's plan. God's plan was not wise enough. We should make some different plan. You know the result, brethren. 
strife at home. And uh, about 5,000 years later, we see their children fighting today. Arabs and Israelites, they are fighting today. They are brothers. Ishmael was the father of Arabs, and Isaac was the father of the Jews. Now God makes a second promise. And they say unto him, the angels said to Sarah, Where is, no, to, to Abraham, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife. Christ was very, very specific now. Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and were stricken in age. Therefore, Sarah laughed with herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? Then when the angel said, Why are you laughing? He said, No, I didn't laugh. Then she lied. <laughs> now, brethren, Abraham was almost 100 years old. Before he didn't believe. How about now? Then when God said, in one year, you have a son. What was the reaction of Abraham? Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. But God was not talking about Ishmael. He was talking about Isaac, he said, Sarah, your wife, she will bear a son. Now, brother, we see those problems, jealousy, fighting, and a lot of problems. Because the, the home of Abraham was a very peaceful home before that. When they commit the serious mistake, the, the, the home was totally changed. It was a disaster. Finally, Ishmael and his mother were put out. Both Abraham and Sarah distrusted the power of God. And it was this error that led to the marriage with Hagar. God had called Abraham to be the father of the faithful. And his life was to stand as an example of faith to the succeeding generation. But his faith had not been perfect. He had shown distrust in God in concealing the fact that Sarah was his wife. And again, in his marriage with Hagar, that he might reach the highest standard, God subjected him to another test. Closest which man was ever called to endure. But this is God's method. God gives us a test. When we fail in that test, He, in His mercy, gives us another one. If we fail in that second one, He will give us a third one. He's very merciful. Now, brethren, um, Chapter 22, it says here, and it came to pass, verse 1, after these things, that God did tempt Abraham. And that, that's not the best translation. It says that God tempted Abraham. The best translation is, sometime later, God tested Abraham. Because uh, James said that God never tempts anyone. He, he tries us. He tests us. He never tempts us. And he said, Abraham, he said, Behold, here I am. He said, Take 
now thy son. My brethren, that's not an easy, easy message. Especially when you have just one son. But we can have 12 sons. It's not easy. And what was the message? Christ, God was very, very direct, very specific with him. Take now thy son. Then uh, Abraham could think, Ishmael or Isaac. Then God said, thy only son. Was Isaac the only son of Abraham? Was he the only son? He was the only son of the promise. Because Ishmael was not the son of promise. That was a result of some human plan. Then Isaac, take now thy son, thy only son, whom thou lovest. But it was very hurting. Take your son, the, thy only son, the son that you lovest. And get into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burning offering upon one of the mountains which I would tell thee of. Then Isaac was the only son of the promise. Uh, brother, Mount Moriah is located in Jerusalem. According to Second Chronicles 3 1, Mount Moriah was the place where, where the, the temple was built. And the distance between Beersheba, where they were at that time, till Jerusalem was 48 miles. It's like Roanoke to Christianburg, more or less. We can go with uh, less than one hour by car, good roads. But Abraham should go by foot. It took him three days. What was the reaction of Abraham now? Brethren, it says here, Abraham rose up early in the morning. That's a symptom of submission. He was, he was not taking time to have a committee meet with his wife. No. Let us discuss this point. Do you agree that I should obey the Lord? He committed a serious mistake before when he, su he submitted himself to her plan. Now he just prayed and he left. Early in the morning, early in the morning, saddled his ass, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. And verse 5 says, Abraham said to his young men, Abide ye here with the ass. I am the lad who will go yonder, and worship, and come again to you. I will call, I will call attention for you for this point here. He said, I will come back. We will come back. But God had uh, given order for him to kill his son. How could they come back together? What was going on in his mind? God promised that uh, through Isaac, we have a big nation, great nation. Then, even if I kill him, God is powerful to raise him again. But brethren, I, I was amazed when I read that because till that time, no one would be, have been resurrected. When we study the Bible today, we find many resurrections. For us, it is a familiar message. But Bob, how about Abraham? Till that time, no one had been risen from the dead. Then he, was, uh, he had a strong faith. He said, be, be here, we will be there to make the sacrifice, and we will be, be back here. Then according to Hebrews 11, he believed that even if he would kill his son, God would fulfill his promise through resurrection. Now, brethren, they were walking 
Abraham and his son. And uh, Isaac, he was familiar with the system. What was necessary to, to make a sacrifice at that time? A lamb, altar, fire, and a knife, wood, and every, al almost everything was there. But then uh, Isaac put a question. Father, we have here wood, we have everything. But the essential thing is missing here. Where is the lamb? <laughs> Abraham, do you imagine how hurting was that question for Abraham? That look, uh, he, how, what, what was his answer? My son, God will provide himself a lamb. I believe that he was inspired. That was a, 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 very, a major prophecy. God will provide himself a lamb. But this, this phrase of Abraham is in harmony with, uh, with uh, Leviticus 17.11. God will provide. Another point there is that uh, God never accepted human sacrifice. That was a problem in the mind of Abraham. I fulfill. I fulfill God's order. But I cannot understand this. Because God is against the human sacrifice. But since he... He gave, he gave orders, I will fulfill. He's merciful, he's wise, he's righteous. We know that the, the immediate fulfillment of that uh, response was the ram, the ram. And the final fulfillment would be the Lamb of God. And they came to the place, verse 9, which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Now, brother, we have another lesson here. Lesson of total submission. It was easy for Abraham to kill his son? Not at all. Would it be easy for Isaac to be killed? No way. But both of them, they were educated to submit to God's will. Then Abraham took Isaac and said, look, my son, I need to, expl to explain to you all the plan. God gave me order to sacrifice you on the altar. And brethren, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, Abraham was a uh, hundred years old, almost one hundred years old. One hundred. That point, one hundred twenty. Yes, you are right. How about Isaac? About twenty years, brethren. If if Isaac would decide, no, no, my father, <laughs> you are not, you are not right. No, I cannot accept that. I live. You do your sacrifice but not with me. <laughs> Could Abraham hold Isaac? No. He was a, a young man. But he was educated to submit. Brethren, we have lessons for our, for ourselves, and for young people. Isaac, he was educated to submit to, his, to God's will, and he was educated to, to obey his father also. And he accepted everything. Could you say that Isaac was the ty a type of Christ? Yes, he was a type of Christ. Then Abraham stretched forth his hand, took the knife to slay his son. And now the angel of the Lord came called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. That was the way as he used to, to answer. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do ye anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. Seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. Now, brethren, 
we have a powerful lesson about the gospel. Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horn. And Abraham went and took the, the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. But that's, it's true that uh, since the very beginning, when man committed sin in Eden, a ram was killed in the place of, the, of man. But here is the most specific message that uh, for the death of man, there was a replacement, there was a substitution. But uh, this, is, this is gospel. We, Barabbas, ourselves, we should go to the cross, not Christ. But Christ took our place. He received the punishment that was due to us. Now, Brad, we can, we can see how happy was Abraham and how happy was Isaac. One was free from killing his son. The son was free from, from death. You can imagine how happy were they when they saw the lamb. Ooh, we are free. But uh, as they look forward, it was not for that, that moment only. Much later, Christ would take their place, my place, your place, to die in our behalf. Instead of substitutionary sacrifice of one life for another, he had mentioned for the first time, as the ram died in Isaac's place, so also Jesus gave his life as a ram for many. It was to impress Abraham's mind with the reality of the gospel, as well as to test his faith that God commanded him to slay his son. The agony which he endured during the dark days of the, that fearful trial was permitted that he might understand from his own experience something of the greatness of the sacrifice made by infinite God for man's redemption. No other test could have caused Abraham such torture of soul, as did the offering of his son. Now, brother, let us consider what is the main difference between Abraham's sacrifice and God's sacrifice. It's true that Abraham suffered three days terribly. If we could, uh, if we could understand that, we should put ourselves in, in his shoes to offer our own son to be killed. And God said to him, look, take your son, Isaac, whom you, you love, and give him a sacrifice for him. But when uh, Isaac was ready to die, then it came the, the lamb, the ram. How about Christ? When, when Christ was on the cross, no one said, Oh, it's enough. Let's stop here. No. He should die. Heavenly beings were witnesses of the sin as the face of Abraham and the submission of Isaac were tested. The trial was far more severe than that which had been brought upon Adam. Complies with the prohibition laid upon our first parent involved no suffering. But the command to Abraham demand the most agonizing sacrifice. All heaven beheld his wonder and admir with wonder and admiration, Abraham's unfaltering obedience. All heaven applauded his fidelity. Satan's accusations were shown to be false. God declared to his servant, Now I know that thou fearest God, 
Sin, thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. God's covenant confirmed to Abraham by an oath before the intelligence of other holds, worlds testify that obedience will be rewarded. Now, brother, there was some, uh, some other target, other purpose for God doing that with Abraham. It had been difficult even for the angels to grasp the mystery of redemption. In this lesson, the, the day last, we thought, thought about the mystery. Then, brother, if, even for the angels, it was difficult. How could God give his son to suffer, to die, instead of criminal people like us? It, was, it had been difficult even for the angels to grasp the mystery of redemption, to comprehend that the commander in, of heaven, the son of God, must die for guilty men. When the command was given to Abraham to offer up his son, the interest of all heavenly beings was enlisted. With intense earnestness, they watched each step in the fulfillment of this command. Went to Isaac's question, where is the lamb for a burning offering? Abraham made an answer. God will provide the ram, himself a lamb. And when the father's hand was stayed as he was about to slay his son, and the ram which God had provided was offered in the place of Isaac, then light was shed upon the mystery of redemption. And even the angels understood more clearly the wonderful provision that God had made for man's salvation. Do we understand that, brethren? I think that's clear. Brethren, uh, when we try to understand intellectually, it's not difficult. <laughs> but when we try to accept this, we need to develop, to develop faith. Because it's not difficult to understand the the plan, intellectually. But to understand God's love, it will take eternity. But brethren, for now, for our salvation, I believe that it's enough. We can understand. We can believe. Because it's not just a prophecy now. God, Christ already died for us. And the spiritual prophecy uh, advise that we should study this plan every day. We should take at least one hour a day to study God's love for us. What happened to Christ in this from Sunday evening to Friday afternoon? What Jesus went through for my salvation, for our salvation. May the Lord help us so, so that we can understand and accept. As we accept this, we will be submitted to his control. Because we know that God is righteous, God is we, uh, wise, God is powerful. And he made the best for our salvation. May the Lord help us so that we can accept and to live according to this plan. Amen. Our dear Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus our Savior, we come before thee. We thank thee, Lord, for this wonderful plan of salvation. We are so limited, Lord, to understand fully thy love, but to help us to understand what is enough for our salvation. Help us to, to believe fully in thee. Help us to submit ourselves to thy control. Help us to follow thy instructions. And bless each one of us here. Help us to surrender ourselves completely to thee. Take our life. Put in our life thy grace and uh, give us the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Help us to understand and help us to obey thy word. Bless each one of us here, our families, thy people everywhere. We remember our brethren in Haiti, Pakistan, and other places where those who are suffering. And help us, Lord, to be looking to Jesus as he is interceding for us. As he is, is presenting his perfect sacrifice in the sanctuary in our behalf. 
help us to reflect your character and help us to be ready for thy soon coming. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.